And good morning. It's time now for Coach's Corner. Live from McDonald's on Madison's Hilltop, I'm Tim Torrance. Thanks for tuning us in. We do it every Saturday from the McDonald's across from the Madison High School. Of course, uh, in the summertime, we dive into some different topics and some different sports and some different people. But this guy is in every year in July, and I almost dropped the ball this year, but we, we recovered and we're doing good. And I've got Coach Bob Lovell in from Indiana Sports Talk. Good morning, sir. Hey, Tim. Thanks for having me. It's always great to be here. It's it's a pleasure to have you on. We've done it for the last several years, and it's a lot of fun talking to you. I just saw you this past week. This right. is twice in one right. week. so I'm a lucky guy. I, no, I'm the lucky guy. I'll tell you what. We'll talk about Indiana Sports Talk in the 25th year of it coming up in just a minute. Let's let's jump in because I, you're kind of a uh, – this is your second home down here because of your grandson. Absolutely. My grandson, Jackson Wheeler, uh, is a uh, – will be a junior mm -hmm. in the fall at Hanover College. A uh, member of the uh, lacrosse team. They had a record-setting year this year. Yes, they, they did. Uh, broke a record for wins. Uh, lost in the championship game in the conference championship to uh, Transylvania. Mm -hmm. uh, he, he is um, he's playing well. Started every game for them this year as a sophomore. Uh, they have a really good, solid core of uh, kids who are coming back uh, as juniors and seniors. So they have uh, high expectations. He loves it down here. Yeah. As I've told you before, uh, he's going to be a communications major. Coincidentally, he's interning for us up at MS Communications <laughs> in Indy. Amazing I'm not sure works. exactly how he got that job. <laughs> uh, might have known someone. Right. And uh, so he's having he's having a great time and loves everything about Hanover uh, for. Uh, my wife and me, uh, our only grandchild, mm -hmm. uh, it's an uh, hour and 15 minute drive for us to come down. So we have spent a lot of time and I still get a considerable amount of grief from my former players at Franklin College and IUPUI for allowing my son to have made such an egregious choice yeah. of uh, institutions. So it's, uh, it's fun and, and um, love everything about it. Like to see a smile on his face. Uh, and I think the Division Three experience for our grandson has been fantastic, to be honest. I don't know anything about lacrosse. Neither do I. So, and, so uh, you're asking the wrong guy. So, but but my, my <laughs> point to the questions is going to be, you don't know anything about lacrosse, and, uh, and being a former coach, is it nice to come down as a, as a, as a grandparent and just Oh, and absolutely. You know, the, the, the coolest thing about it is that uh, Jack's father played for me at, at IUPUI. Mm -hmm. And so as a kid growing up, you know, he was he played, uh, you know, football and basketball and baseball. And he's left-handed. And, and I had these dreams as a grandfather of a left-handed pitcher and, you know, that. And in and, and, and the sixth grade, he was trying to juggle uh, all these kinds of things. He went to a lacrosse camp in the summer, a buddy of his, uh, said, hey, I'm going to this lacrosse camp, and so he went and then came back, and, and that was it. He yeah. was he was he was in love with. So one that spring, he tried to uh, balance playing uh, lacrosse. He made a travel team, tried out, made a travel team, mm -hmm. and he was playing baseball. And came to me and literally one day and says, I, I know you're not going to be happy, but I've decided I want to play lacrosse. And I said. It doesn't matter to me what you do. Mm -hmm. Just you know, find something that you like and find something you, you really truly enjoy and right. do it. And he has he's made himself a pretty good. You know, he tried out for a big time travel team. Was the only first year player to make it on the A team. Became their most valuable player his second year. Uh, he played on a travel team in the summer. Um, went to Le uh, Brebeuf Jesuit as a freshman and started. When he went in, they won three games his senior year. They had a record-breaking season, made it to the Final Four for the first time ever. Uh, he was given the equivalency of the uh, Trester Award mm -hmm. for the state of Indiana in lacrosse, which we were ecstatic about. And similarly, comes down here as a freshman. Uh, they have a losing season. This past year, they had their first winning season, mm -hmm. record-breaking number of years. The similarities between the progress he's made at all levels, and he's done it himself. Right. He's done it all by himself, and I, I, I'm, I'm enormously proud of him, obviously, sure. because he's my grandson. But the way he's done what he's done in, in his athletic career has just been phenomenal for me to watch. And um, to, uh, here's what I know about lacrosse. When, when we score, we're happy. When they score, we're not. <laughs> okay, and, and that's it. I mean, I don't yeah. – there are a lot of similarities, I think, between soccer and 
Sure. I see some of the things in basketball w between, you know, lines and angles and these kinds of things and balancing a field and ball movement and people mm -hmm. movement and those kinds of things. But um, just to see the, the relationship that uh, that he has with his teammates and with his coaches, uh, and and he literally has a smile on his face. Um, it, it's fun for us to come down and just watch and mm -hmm. and not and, and not we're invested obviously emotionally because it's our grandson. Sure. But for me, you know, as heavily involved in sports as I've been my entire life, it's just fun to watch some, a group of guys go out there and play for each other and have a good time and win a lot of games. You, you, and for, for me, just knowing you as, as the guy from Indiana Sports Talk and the, the former coach, to find out you have a grandson that plays lacrosse, <laughs> it just it doesn't quite mix up right. No, but you know what? It's, it, it does. It, if you think about it, if you uh, intellectualize it, it makes a lot of sense sure. because I think Jack was smart enough to understand at a young age he didn't want to listen to his dad and his grandfather <laughs> tell him what to do. He's a pretty free-spirited guy, mm -hmm. to be honest. And, um, you know, the one thing I've tried to w help him with throughout his life is, you know, you, 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 life's about choices, and mm -hmm. you're going to have an opportunity to make a whole lot, and you need to own the choices that you make. Right. And, and, and when you make the choice, you need to be all in. And I told him, if lacrosse is where you think your destiny is, then you need to pursue it as hard as you can, and no one will be a bigger cheerleader than I will. How's the, the communications process going for him does he like communications I he just decided at the end of his sophomore year to become a communications mm -hmm. major i'm not exactly sure uh w what he thinks he's going to do <laughs> uh I, I did my best to talk him out of it right um since i'm in the business and we're in the business and and we understand it i, I just think for him it was Im important uh, number one to to try to find something that he thinks he might have mm -hmm. a little bit of passion for uh, I think we all understand that in this day and age, you need to be well-rounded and well-versed about a lot of things, and, and, and people change jobs and occupations a number of times in their careers. Uh, but I think he's he's excited. He's had a couple classes in that and likes what he's doing. As I mentioned off air before we started, he's interning with us at MS Communications in Indianapolis, and you know he's working. Um, he's doing a lot of fun things with sure. them. He's really having a great summer, and mm -hmm. so uh, the, the biggest I will tell you, you'll like this. He calls me. His biggest thrill this summer was uh, Joey Chestnut, the uh, the hot dog eating champion, mm -hmm. was in studio for an entire three hours, and he got to spend three hours with him in studio. So he calls me. He calls me Grand Bob. He calls and goes, Grand Bob. He says, you're not going to believe this. He said, Joey Chestnut hung out in the studio with us the entire time. He said, it's the cool, he's the coolest guy I've ever met. Uh, and I, I thought, yeah, well, this is a great way for you to spend your summer. I'm happy for you. So, but, you know, he's, no, he's, I, I'm not exactly sure what his intentions are. Mm -hmm. I think he's talking now about uh, going into video production and sure. being one of those kinds of guys. And, uh, I, you know, whatever he does, I, I, I'm just wanting, obviously, to be happy. And, and and have it be fulfilling for him and, and have as much fun as he can. 25th season coming up uh, on August the 2nd, my youngest daughter's birthday, oh, by the way. Happy birthday in uh, advance. That's 19 years old coming up on August the 2nd. I don't know where the time has gone, and where has the time Absolutely. gone for 25 years? I don't know. I really don't. <laughs> it, we started this in August of uh, 1994 mm -hmm. and um, with an idea. Um weren't sure what the sure. What, what it would whether it would work or not. Scott Eaker, who was the uh, uh, news and sports director of Network Indiana at the time, had an idea for a radio show, um, and and used WORX as an example on, on Friday. You know, you're a music station, and a very important member of the of the community in Madison and surrounding areas, and and the mission that WORX and a lot of other stations have is to be be the information hub for people in their community. Good information, necessary information, mm -hmm. bad information. Sure. Uh, and so, but you guys play music and people listen and you know, you do a lot of community involved things, mm -hmm. but on Friday night in the fall and Friday and Saturday during the winter, you're doing Madison high school football and basketball. And, and people are engaged and involved and invested mm -hmm. in that. So the idea was you broke music format to go to a game so you know from 7 until 9 or 9 30 you're doing a game so the question was at 9 30 when the game's over what are, what are people going to do right 
they were listening to a game, there's no game now, so will they stay and listen to music? Or will the people who were listening to music and aren't necessarily involved in sports, will they come back after the game? Mm -hmm. Don't know. We had no, but Scott had an idea that if you, if you, if we as a network have the capability to provide complimentary programming from the end of the game until midnight, you'd retain an audience or even grow an audience. Sure. And there was no data, no, no studies, no, it was a, an idea mm -hmm. that he had. And guess what? It worked. Yeah. 25 years later. Yeah, I think, it, it, I think <laughs> it, it did. And I had worked with him. He was my play-by-play -play guy at IUPUI in my mm -hmm. last two years there. And, He'll tell you that he saw something in me, and I, I don't know what he saw, to be honest, because what he saw was a guy yelling and screaming and yelling at officials and yelling at his players and throwing things and all kinds of stuff, and I'm not sure that's those are necessary skills to be on the radio, <laughs> but um, we, we had a talk, and obviously I didn't have a job at the time because I had just stopped coaching, mm -hmm. and so... Um, I, the word I come up with is serendipity. It's, yeah. it's a serendipitous that we are together at the time. He has an idea, and all these factors come together to, to make it work. Now, that first night was dreadful. Right. I mean, it was beyond, I've told you this before, it's sure. horrible. But we got a little bit better and a little bit better, and people started to listen. And I think they were intrigued by the fact that I wasn't criticizing anybody. This is really before sports talk radio has really started. Right. right. And it's it you know you do a local you know you do a wrap up show uh, locally on mm -hmm. ORX. Most of the stations do it around sure. the state. But the idea to take that local wrap up show and expand it for the entire state was groundbreaking. Mm -hmm. And um, I was just lucky to be in the right place at the right time. You know, and, and with technology, and we talk about this every year you're on coach, with technology evolving, uh, technology is, is increasing. And, and technology is killing me. And it's, <laughs> and, and, it's, and it's good when it's working <laughs> right. 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 Uh, but you have to learn and understand how to use it and all that. And, you know, I'm, I'm a Twitter, Twitter follower because that's you what have to you be. have to be. have to be. But I can't find out everything on Twitter that I can find out for you guys. Well, and I appreciate that. And, and I think we, we know we are a niche radio show. Mm -hmm. we, we have been from the start. And what Indiana Sports Talk is, and I hope continues to be, when you were at a game, and, and this is, it took a while for people to understand this sure. in, the, in the company I work for and salespeople and others. Hey, look, everybody goes to high school sports in our state. I mean, we're a lucky state because mm -hmm. there's such a great interest. Sure. So on Friday night in Madison, you may not have a, a, a son who plays football, but you might have a, you know, a, a junior high son or daughter who wants to go to the game and hang out with their friends and so you drive them to the game you pick them up after the game but when you pick them up after the game you're going to listen to the show mm -hmm. if you've been at the game literally you can't wait to get in your car to hear the scores and listen to the talk right and and people go people really care. yeah they care about that yeah. i can i promise you they yeah. they care about it and uh, it, it, it fills that need I think people have for information. You know, it was like in, in, in basketball, you know, you think about, you know, you, you're following the polls and you want to see if you're a 3 a team, even in football. I mean, mm. it's the same thing in both sports. You, you have a good team and you're following the polls and you're thinking about who you might see in, the, in a semi-state or a state championship game. And I think the other part of it is, is that you just want to be a part, it's a connection that you have with other people. Because mm -hmm. high school sports, well, there's a reason they made a movie called Friday Night Lights. There's yeah. a reason they wrote the book. There's a reason they had the television show. Uh, and in our state, obviously, with basketball in the winter, people care. I mean, really, really, really care about high school sports in our state. Mm -hmm. And our show, I think, unifies everyone, galvanizes everyone in terms of what that experience is like on a Friday and Saturday night. Well, I had Coach Wilson, Madison football coach, on last Saturday. And, and one of the things he and I talked about was, you know, Madison's football program has had its struggles over the years. But every Friday night, a great crowd at, at Cub Field. And there's a reason for that. Yeah, there is. I mean, those are our guys. Yeah, that, those are our kids. That's exactly right. Uh, it, it, it's, it, it's um, you know, fathers who played and want their sons and daughters to be involved in those activities. It's grandparents, such as myself, who mm -hmm. want to go out there and watch. It's also people who are involved in the community because 
you know, what happens uh, in a high school uh, is important to that community for a, a great number of reasons, not the least of which is those are your kids. Right. And it's the fabric of what the community is about. And so we're just thankful to be a part of it. Uh, and and I've, I'm mindful, Tim, after all these years, I'm, I'm very mindful of the responsibility that I think our show has. And I certainly think the responsibility I have uh, is to uh, maintain the standards that we have uh, secondly, uh, to bring as, as much information as we can to people around the state without any particular bias one way or the other. And I think more than anything, it's taking me a long while to, to appreciate this uh, with the opportunity I have, but um, we are an important voice for people and, and we are entertaining. I hope we're entertaining sure. because, you know, I've said this a lot. You know, WORX and they're the nearly over 200 radio stations around the state of Indiana, you have opportunities for different programs. Mm -hmm. uh, you're bombarded with syndication and all kinds of things. And people want you to carry shows and thinking about doing local shows. For WORX and 45 other radio stations to choose us, mm -hmm. to, to put on their airwaves, to be with their listeners, is an enormous responsibility for us and one that we shouldn't take lightly and one that we need to understand that that you think people aren't listening they are and and you have a responsibility to them to be as professional as you can to be as prepared as you can and to do the absolute best job you can the entire every minute you're on the air you have to do the best you can and i think we've been able to maintain that standard for all these years. One of the things in, in, in our travels out of town to, to games and then listening to you uh, coming back home, uh, one of the things that it always strikes us and people that listen because we, we hear it from them is when you talk about teams around our area that mm -hmm. people recognize coaches that you recognize right. around our area when you talk about their game because we're at this game and you're talking about right. a game we weren't at. Right. So it gives us everybody information. Well, that's the idea. I mean, we, we, we at the start, and I, I think we haven't really uh, uh, educated people that much, but when we first started, we took listener phone calls. Mm -hmm. And um, you're back there in the day. You know that. And so we the, 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 the concept was – when you're at a game on Friday night, so you know you go to someone's home or you go out to dinner or you go someplace else, we want you to talk to us. We want you to call us and talk about the game. We want the coaches to call, the media to call, we want the fans to call. And that, that was the grand vision. Um, didn't work out like we wanted, right? you know. Um, managing those kinds of calls, you know, people got a little exuberant, so to speak. Right. Uh, they may have been uh, slightly lubricated uh, <laughs> in, in terms of post-game libations. Sure. And so we decided the best way to handle the block of time, though, because we were on for three hours at the time, mm -hmm. was to eliminate the, the fan part of it and just go strictly information. Mm -hmm. So for uh, the 25 years we've been on the air, about 24 and a half of them have been strictly information. Right. And the onus is on me now to, 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 to fill that time. And, and people don't understand, I roll into the studio at about 8.30. I'm going to talk about 20 to 25 games I haven't seen. Mm -hmm. I don't have much information. Twitter gives you more information, but for the most part, I have a coach's name and a score. And um, I have to I have to fill that time, right. and and I when I walk in at eight thirty I have no idea absolutely no idea who's going to call or when. Right. Um, I have faith that someone's going to call, mm -hmm. but um, there's a certain tension, which I really appreciate because it does remind me of being a coach. Mm -hmm. Because you'd come into that game and you thought you knew what your team was going to do and you right. thought you knew what that other team was going to do. You, you had an idea of what you felt like was going to happen, but you never really knew. And so you had to be able to handle things on the fly. I can handle things on the fly, yeah. trust me. And so, you know, we email all the coaches around the state uh, every Thursday and um, it, it's a crapshoot whether or not they're going to call, right. at what time. I, I literally I have no idea when any, who's going to call or at what time. And it's kind of Fun, it's, not knowing that. It's it, and it's interesting because there's coaches that are regular coaches. Absolutely. That, that will faithfully call right. every week, regardless 
of their result. Right. And, and I think that's impressive. I do too. And I think uh, I think the other part of it too, it, it, think about this. The cool thing is when after big games, mm -hmm. uh, milestone games uh, type of things, for example, coach, uh, first year coach wins his first game. Right. Uh, coach wins the conference championship for the first time. Uh, breaks the school record for wins. Uh, those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. uh, from where I sit, and it took me a while to, to be smart enough to figure this out, but they have chosen to spend time with our show talking about a milestone in their life mm -hmm. or a, a young man who broke a record or a young sure. woman who broke a record or whatever they, they they took the time to call us beyond as you know be on hold for a while because right. you're going to be on hold sure. and, and and share that information share that story with the entire state they had the, they chose to do that they mm -hmm. chose to share that time with me and with our audience and if you don't think that's important you're crazy right. okay i mean i talk about this a lot. This uh, the football coach in the northern part of the state who called and, and uh, it was in the, during the sectional and I and I he's talking and, and I think he's outside mm -hmm. and I ask him he talks about the game I say let me ask you a question I said, where are you and he yeah. goes I'm walking back I'm on highway such and such I'm walking back to our school from the game I said why why are you doing that he said I, we had never beaten this team. Mm -hmm. And I told our kids, if we won, I'd walk back to school. <laughs> I said, well, what's the temperature? And he goes, it's like 30 degrees and it's snowing. I mean, it's right. ugly. And I said, uh, are people following? He goes, Bob, the, the caravan behind me is as far as you can see. <laughs> okay, so here's the biggest win of this guy's life. Right. He's going to share that time with me. Yeah. Now, if you can't get excited about yeah. that, you probably need to check your heart and check yeah. your pulse because I'm not sure you you got a lot going on right now. And that's what makes this thing unique uh, is the fact that people take time. They care enough about uh, our show, I think, and they care and they're nice to, right. to me. Uh, but they care enough about what we're doing and how we represent them, and they feel comfortable. Uh, that we're going to, to give them the opportunity to talk about something that's very important to them. And, and that, you understand, you're in this business, you understand how important that really is. 25th <laughs> year coming up on August the 2nd for Indiana Are Sports you coming Talk. up for the celebration? I would I would like to, however. You have to work. Well, it's it's a pretty important birthday that day. Oh, so it's your daughter's birthday. That's right. Never so mind. I, I, would, I would love to, though. I, here's what we're doing. Uh -huh. All right. And I, and I fought this. I, don't, I didn't want to do it. <laughs> You know me. I don't right. listen. All right. I don't, yeah, I don't, yeah. I don't, I don't want to. Uh, it's literally, uh, Greg Rakestar is going to co-host with me that night. Uh, we're going to have taped interviews from a lot of the guys who were part of the show sure. way back when sure. and throughout. And it's literally like, Bob Lovell, this is your life. Right. And I said, you know what, D don't do this. Right. Right. I just, I'd rather go on and talk like we normally do. Right. But, uh, I mean, the network folks are really pretty adamant about this. So we're, we're excited. And we're inviting people uh, from the, the affiliated mm -hmm. stations to come in and hang out with us. We're going to have a little dinner before and have some fun. But... Still hard to believe. Man, yeah. oh, man. I still had uh, some dark hair but back in the day when we started the show. <laughs> 25 years, and, and going back to year number one, and we've talked about this before, but, you know, now with all the technology, oh. it's, information is just this, this, yeah. this. 25 years ago, we didn't have all this technology. No. How would you make it work? Um, I had a uh, – my studio producer was a gentleman named Russ Maloney. Mm -hmm. uh, and Russ Maloney – is one of the most talented, um, personable, intelligent guys I've ever met, ever worked with in my life. He's in L.A. now. He's trying to break into uh, into the comedy business, mm -hmm. and it gives you an idea of, of his personality. And so, the, literally, the first night we go on the air, we're on the air at nine o'clock, and at eight fifty-seven. He comes into the studio and he looks he looks horrible. He looks like a mess. Yeah. And I I said what what's going on? What are you doing? And he goes, um, I was in an accident. I got sideswiped on the way down. And then going, you know, are you okay? He goes, yeah. I said, why didn't you call us? He goes, no. You know, first night I got to be on. <laughs> right. So back then, Russ Maloney. This shows you how dedicated he is. Russ Maloney. Our studio engineer, when you would call, we had a whiteboard. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm sitting at a, uh, this is really goes back, a, a round wooden table. 
in a, in a literally in an, a, a small office, mm -hmm. and he, Russ is three, four feet away behind a plexiglass divided. Um, what would you call it? Like a desk or something. Sure. And behind him is a whiteboard. Now this round table, little known story. This round table is from the Pence family. Mike Pence started mm -hmm. his radio sure. show on Network Indiana in April of '94, and we started Indiana Sports Talk in August. Mm -hmm. They drill a hole in the middle, put a three mic stand there, mm -hmm. and that table—that's Mike's table—is yeah. sitting there. And Russ has the whiteboard, and it that has five different lines, and he literally is on the phone writing numbers up, writing names and scores on the whiteboard as you well understand, mm -hmm. pushing buttons, hitting commercials on the right time and doing all right. that. And he looked like the literal, the, the, the description is a one-armed paper hand, <laughs> right? <laughs> right, right. Because he is the busiest guy you've ever seen sure. in your life. And, and for me, um, newspaper, mm -hmm. we, we, yeah, the, yeah. New, we use newspaper, sure. but in terms of uh, information while you're doing the show, it was all on the whiteboard. Mm -hmm. That's all we had. And, and it's... You know, and now uh, we've progressed. Obviously, you know, call screener. You know, you have a computer. Yeah. It tells you. But but when you call mm -hmm. to talk about uh, Madison football or basketball, Tim Torrance WRX Madison beats Scottsburg. That's right. it. Mm -hmm. That's all the information. Now, nowadays you follow Twitter. Sure. And and you follow those kinds of things, and 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 you you were able to get more information. Right. Back when we started. Sure. Um, we made a lot of things up. To be honest, <laughs> not gonna lie. <laughs> still do, as a matter of fact. Still do. Well, but you know how it is. And nobody you, knows. You know, they, they actually don't. And no. what's amazing to me, after all these years, is people say, well, how, how do you know all this stuff? Right. And you know, you, you know every coach, you know it. No, I don't know every coach. Right. Uh, you know everybody, every person. I don't know them all, but I act like I do. Right. Which is part of the magic of radio, mm -hmm. is that you're able to create pictures and images and, and things just by virtue of what you say and how you say it. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, it, if you've got a score in front of you that says Madison beat Scottsburg 17-14, to 14, you can pretty much guess that that's a pretty well-played game. And in some cases, uh, maybe it was a late field goal to win the game. And right. so, you know, you're only going to ask the coach three or four different questions with the amount of time you have. Right. And so you, know, you, you try to guess. Sometimes you guess right, sometimes you guess wrong. Right. More often than not, you're right. Mm -hmm. And people go, how did you know that? Right. Well, you know, it took a wild guess. Right. And and and, and you I, I listened to you long enough to know you 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 feed off what the coach tells you to to mm -hmm. be uh, to go beyond mm -hmm. the, the what the last question. Well, I do something that's hard for me, and that's listen. Listen. Now, yeah. I'm not good at it. <laughs> I don't like to. I like to listen to me. I think my wife would tell you I enjoy listening to me. But I think the key of being a, an interviewer mm -hmm. is is to have that byplay, right. is to pay attention and, and listen to what they say. But the hard thing, Tim, is I've got to try to listen while I'm looking at a computer screen, thinking about the next call, and I've, I've got somebody in my ear saying something from the studio. Right. So you, if you can't multitask, you can't do you can't do this job. And right. I've gotten I think I've gotten better at it, but it's hard to try to do all that when you have, the, the, as you can imagine. The volume of information that, that I'm uh, dealt with, that I deal with on a Friday and Saturday night, uh, this, it's a lot. There's a lot of information. And I've said this before on your show and others. Look, it, it's about um, being an air traffic controller. I get planes, I get, my planes are circling. And right. I get, my job is to get them on the runway yep. and get them out. Right. And so within the confines of what we call in, the, in our business hard breaks, mm -hmm. We're going to a commercial at 10:30, and not 10:31, not 10:32. We're going to that commercial at 10:30 because the automation system we have for all our stations and all that—if you miss that time, right. you screw everybody up. Sure. And so, um, you know, hear all about it on Monday. You were late, <laughs> and on and on and on. Right. And you can't do it. And so, you know, I have a 10-minute segment, a six-minute segment, mm -hmm. and a five-minute segment each hour. And so. Um, I don't want people to be on hold. I want to get the information as quickly as I can. I want to get as much. And we figured out how to do it after all these years. You've had uh, an, a number of, of guys come and, and, and be on your show as far as doing the scoreboard updates and providing information. Those guys behind the scenes work pretty hard. Oh, they're incredible. Yeah. Um, Rob Conant, who mm -hmm. we talked about before sure. we went on air. Rob Conant worked here at WORX. Yeah. 
and uh, he is our Friday night uh, anchor. Mm -hmm. And I, I think he's as talented a young man as I've ever worked with. But, you know, the, the coach in me um, sees some similarities between being a coach, being a basketball coach, and, and what I try to do on Indiana Sports Talk. Right. Um, it's gratifying to work with young people who care and are as talented as they are and then see them go on and, and get opportunities like Rob. Mm -hmm. Rob has a big time news job with WIBC in Indianapolis uh, because of his great work on Indiana Sports Talk and, and, and he's, listen, he's great and yep. he has big things ahead of him mm -hmm. in, in our business. Uh, Michael Grady who spent a lot of yep. time with us Michael Grady now works for the Yes Network in New York. Uh, he is the uh, He's the pre and post game guy for the uh, New York, for the Brooklyn Nets. Mm -hmm. That's his big thing. Yeah. And just signed a new contract with him. They expanded his role, sure. expanded his opportunities. Uh, so guys like that who've worked on the show for uh, as many years as we've done it, uh, and the guys who uh, are the studio engineer, which is the hardest job right. that there is to have. And without, without their great work as studio engineers and without those scoreboard update guys who are there, literally giving the information that people want. If I had a dime for every time people say, I can't wait to get in the car to hear the scores, mm. I could have retired by right, now. Right. Because that's what's really important about about the show, the scores are. And so, uh, yeah, I mean, it's I'm the front man. Uh, I get the credit. Right. right. Uh, I'm not sure it's necessarily deserved, but those guys do all the work. Yeah, they, they're hardworking guys. And not being there and watching it, I just know from all the information that's processed that that's, that's, that's a key to make the Moves success. Moves pretty quickly. Yeah. You know, I will tell you what, that two and a half hours goes by in about an hour. Yeah. Any big changes this year coming up, or it's just no? I don't think so. I think we're just going to push ahead and do what we do. I think uh, I think we we have a formula that works. Mm -hmm. uh, I think people recognize what we do. Um, I think the biggest thing for us is we have to continue to stay out in front of what's going on technologically, sure. uh, utilize that better. I have to get better mm -hmm. at it, uh, which is hard. I mean, for you know, a 68 year old guy. Uh, I know I have Twitter accounts and Facebook accounts and. <laughs> I've stayed away from Instagram. I don't think people want to see pictures of me. <laughs> you know what I mean? I, I don't, and I'm not sure how Instagram fits into what we do, but right. uh, MS Digital has a, a great a group of people who help us and, and work on it. And I think one of the biggest things that, that we have to continue to do is develop those relationships with coaches and media right. people and rely on what they do. And I think more than anything is just to, to continue to reach out to our audiences in any way we can to build and in, in, encourage them to support local high school sports in their communities. Mm -hmm. You know, we spent some time sure. with the IHSA early in the week, Tim, you yeah. and, and uh, the other affiliates. And um, I just think that, you know, we're, we're at a time now culturally where it's, it's interesting. Participation numbers for high school athletes are up. But then on the other side, youth sports, 70% of youth uh, sports athletes drop out of the sport at, after age 13. And right. so, you know, we're at a time where it's important to understand what our mission is in the youth sports and high school sports uh, arena is supposed to be. And I think we, with Indiana Sports Talk, I in particular, need to take more of a leadership role in, in making sure we understand what this is all supposed to be about. Speaking of the IHSAA, I know you you work with them uh, yeah. on on their their draw shows right. and and right. it's it's, it's hey, those, are, those, those a, are hard. Yeah. That's a great program. Holy moly, are those hard? <laughs> <laughs> what makes it so hard? Well, you know what? Number one is I mean, you're on TV. Well, yeah, well, yeah, I guess. <laughs> uh, you know, and that's that's when people recognize I do in fact have a, a face for face radio. radio. But, but here's here's here are the things. One is it's a live show mm -hmm. when well, I'm used to doing live radio sure. and, and so I think I can understand it but I, I think when you and maybe I overanalyze it too much but this is one of the most important nights or days of the entire year sure. because you you have a two-hour opportunity you're going to give everybody this the draw who they're playing and when and where mm -hmm. which as we know in our state we're the only ones left, I think, who still have a blind draw. Right. So it's enormously important. And secondly, you don't want to make mistakes. Right. And you want to make sure that you get the information right, you get it timely within the confines of two hours, the number of commercial breaks you have. And, and the other thing is, 
and we made this decision a few years ago. We're going to mention every sectional. Sure. We're not going to say that one sectional is more important than another. Now, we all understand that there are certain sectionals that are really, really good. Sure. And some sectionals, teams don't, none of them have winning records. Right. But we're all going to, you're all, you're, we're going to get mentioned. Right. And to be able to pull that off within the confines of two hours and do it and do it well and, and do it to where you, you think you've been able to, you know, satisfy the things you need to do is not an easy thing to do. The cool right. thing about it has been the insertion of social media. Right. We're looking at these viewing parties, and it's taken on more of a, a feel of an NCAA Selection Sunday sure. type of show. And I think everybody's engaged and involved. And, and there are some who've complained, how come you're not on television? And it's basically now primarily uh, on the Internet. Right. And, and, and I think one of the things that I said to the IHSAA was, hey, look, your audience should be your kids. Mm -hmm. You're in business for these kids. Right. And your kids get their information off their phones and off their computers. Right. And so they don't watch TV mm -hmm. unless they watch it off their computer and what you ought to do. Uh, and Heath Shanahan, who's their director of um, uh, media, if you will, worked with us at, at Emmis, worked mm -hmm. with me on my show. Sure. And uh, we did some things with Emmis uh, Digital on some high school games of the week. He understands it. Bobby Cox recognizes it. And it's been, for us, it's been one of the coolest things I do, quite right. frankly. But it's the hardest thing I do in the right. entire year, without I, question. That's I, I didn't know that. Oh, my, I mean, I, my wife will tell you I'm never nervous. I'm slightly, slightly <laughs> nervous. I'm apprehensive about pairing shows because it's such a big deal and you want to do it and want to do it right. 25 years you've done this. How many more years will you do this? It's a great question. Um, I'm 68. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I obviously have heart issues. Mm -hmm. uh, three years ago I had open heart surgery. I uh, felt great since then. Still Good. feel great. Great. Uh, I try not to look at it. You know I'm not a milestone guy. Right. Um, okay, so 25th season, what's the difference between that and the 24th and 26th? Right. I mean, yep. you know, so I don't, yeah. when I was coaching, did I look at you know, wanting to get to a certain number of wins, a certain number? No. Uh, that, that doesn't mean anything to me. Mm -hmm. um, I think the biggest thing, and I've said this before, I think there are two fa three factors. One, uh, I work at the pleasure of MS Communications. All right. So you know how that is. Yeah. Uh, as long as they will have me, right. um, um, I'll, I'll continue to do the show. Secondly, um, I've been married 50 years. Uh, 50 years my wife has not had weekends. <laughs> Right. Yeah, you understand yes. that. You're in the business. You yep. understand that. People who aren't in the business don't understand it. But, you know, on a, on a Friday night, um, I leave Franklin at 8 o'clock. Yeah. On a Saturday night, I leave Franklin at 8 o'clock. Yeah. Um, and in, if there's a wedding, uh, a, a party, uh, whatever it is, uh, for us, we're out of there at 8 o'clock. Right. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And so... Um, I, that that wears on you. Mm -hmm. I, I think the other thing, uh, the other thing. I think I'll do it as long as my wife uh, is, is still on board with me, sure. not being at home when I am, and she is. And in all the years I coached and all the years I've done this, I've I've never been home on the weekends. Mm -hmm. I think the third thing is um, my, my health, but I, I'm fine. I think I, I expanded to a fourth thing. I don't have hobbies. Right. Uh, I don't play golf. I used to. I don't play golf. Uh, I'm, I can't build anything. Right. Um, I'm not one of those guys. I'm not a fix-it kind of guy. I'm yeah. really horrible. I can screw in a light bulb. That's about <laughs> it. Well, um, that's something. Uh, so um, I have to have things that fill my time. Right. And so uh, I'll, I'll do it, I think, as long as Amos will have me, as long as my, my wife continues to, to be as supportive as she is, and I sure. can't an, an anticipate that that would change. And I still think I have a passion for it. Yeah. I, still, I still think... And I hope that this is the case, that when you tune in on Friday and Saturday night, I still have the energy, I still have the passion, and if I, and if I don't have that, yeah. no one will need to tell me. I'll, I'll just walk out. You'll just know. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Coach, we appreciate it's you coming down. It's great to be down. with you. know that. You know, it's it's an hour and a half, give or take, drive for you, yeah. an hour and 15 minutes, it's something okay. like that. But uh, you come down every July, and we appreciate it. And, of course, we're looking forward to August the 2nd. So am I. Thanks, Tim. Thanks for all you do for us at WRX. We couldn't do it without you. We appreciate it. That's Coach Bob Lovell speaking with us this morning on Coach's Corner, of course, Indiana Sports Talk. We'll have it on Fridays and Saturday nights right here on Works 96.7. Thanks to A.J. Bramer in studio. I'm Tim Torrance. Until next Saturday, live from McDonald's on Madison's Hilltop, it's Coach's Corner here on Works 96.7.